Hi there, I'm Steve Statch, President of Austin American Technology Corporation. I'm also the Chief Chemist. I'm here today to talk to you about rose testing. And what is rose testing? How does it perform? The history of rose testing? How to use the data and interpret the data for your benefit? To start off with, we're going to start with what is a rose test? A rose test is an ionic cleanliness test used for determining the amount of ions on a circuit assembly. The term ROSE is an acronym, acronym that stands for Resistance of Solvent Extract. And that is the method that we use for determining the ionic con content or the concentration on the circuit board surface. That is done by either spraying a test solvent onto a circuit board and collecting the residue uh, in a beaker and then measuring the increase of that uh, solvent uh, resistance in, uh, in the beaker and using that data to determine the amount of salt that's present. Or in modern day methods, uh, some test methods use an immersion method where you put the circuit board into a tank of solvent and you watch those ions come off. The ions that we're talking about are sodium, chlorine, uh, bromine, fluorine, and those types of ions. It doesn't really matter. They're all uh, kind of equalized on a common scale called sodium chloride equivalent, where we take all the ions that come off of a board and we pretend that they're sodium chloride and what the effect would be. That is expressed in sodium chloride equivalents. Why is rose testing important? Why do we want to do it? And it's important for several reasons, okay? Primarily, these little ionic uh, critters are bad for a circuit board. They crawl around, they get mixed with water, and they cause chemical reactions to occur, especially in the presence of a voltage bias. They will form what's called a dendrite, and a dendrite is pretty much a direct short on your circuit board, and that will cause circuit board failure. In the early days, we had a lot of failures that resulted directly from these ions causing shorts on circuit boards and creating failures. Probably the no most notable one was one of the early Apollo training missions where the module unfortunately caught on fire and the source of the fire was never totally determined, but the most likely cause was determined to be an electrical short on a circuit board. Well, with this type of failures occurring, the military very quickly decided to put standards in place that would prevent and hopefully these kinds of uh, catastrophes from happening, be it on a space mission or on a military piece of hardware or a medical instrument. So at this point, the military got together and put out a military specification, MIL-P22809, in about 1970. That military specification gave the amount of ionic contamination that was allowed on a circuit board, and that was maximum allowable was 10 micrograms per square inch, or 1.6 micrograms per square centimeter. That standard uh, was implemented and a lot of the failures went away and it became the standard that we currently use today. In some cases, we use a tighter standard for really high reliability space missions, medical products, but that is the current standard for class three IPC high reliability electronics. Rose testing has both benefits and limitations associated with the test. To talk about some of the limitations that we have, the first one would be that it's insensitive to hot spots. If I was to go to lunch, have my sandwich and potato chips, come back and not wash my hands, and I take a circuit board and touch one spot on that circuit board, that would give enough ionic contamination on that one spot if it was in a critical area to probably give rise to a dendrite. However, the the fact that the average value would not be affected beyond that limit wouldn't be, the test would be insensitive to that one little hot spot. That's one limitation of the test. Another limitation of the test is that we can't test the residue if it's not soluble in the fluid. So if, you know, in the case of a uh, salt from a uh, from potato chip, 
that's going to be very soluble in water or alcohol that's typically used. But if we had a flux on there that was not very soluble in alcohol and water, which rosin fluxes typically are, that's what we first start, started off with with rosin fluxes. That's why we have isopropyl alcohol and water as our test solution typically. But the newer fluxes are not rosin-based, they're resin-based, and they can uh, they may or may not be dissolved in the solution that we're testing in. So if the test solution is not right, we don't dissolve the residue, we will not measure the residue. So it's important to have the right solvent in there as well. And the final limitation really in terms of the ROSE test today is that it, you have to pull a board out of your cleaning process and take it into the ROSE tester in order to measure the value that you have. So you can't do every board and you can only do a random sample once a day, once a week, once a shift whatever you determine your frequency is going to be. So you can have some escapes out of the system uh, in terms of batches and things like that. That's, that really summarizes the limitations. Now I'm going to talk about the strengths of ROSE testing. Major strength is it's a very simple test. It's easy to run. Uh, you can have a basic uh, level technician can run the test and get the data and record the data. So it doesn't require an engineering level, you know, it's an easy test. It takes about 10 minutes to run the test and that makes it really easy to run and to collect the data, the data you know, being very useful. So it's worth the effort. The second strength that we find in modern day testers is that we can change the solvent. So where we're talking about weakness prior with the alcohol water solutions, now we can change the solution to pure water. We can change the solution to uh, an alcohol, pure alcohol, or a completely different solvent that will dissolve the residue. That is a new strength that are, is in some of the new machines out there. And the, the last strength I want to talk about is just come on the market, basically, and that's where, uh, where you can run the rose test in your cleaning process. So there's uh, new batch cleaners on the market now that allow you to run a rose test after you wash the board, after you rinse the board, and just before you dry the board. Now that occurs automatically in the process. The data is collected and stored, and every batch that comes out actually gets a rose test run on it that way without pulling a sample and without having an operator uh, do a separate test. So that eliminates two of the three earlier limitations that I talked about. So. In summary, I think the strengths and the weaknesses are getting more weighted towards the strengths that we want to see and less encumbered by those limitations that it saw in the earlier test. We're going to talk a little bit now about understanding uh, the ROSE testing data and how to use it, using it in production and how to interpret that data. So understand that all of the data comes out in sodium chloride equivalent. That means that regardless of the ion, it's going to be equalized on a common scale of what it would be if it were all sodium chloride. So if we say 10 micrograms of sodium chloride equivalent, that's the amount of ions all added up together that give the same effect as 10 micrograms of sodium chloride. That uh, being said, what we want to do is we want to use that data uh, to get the best data we can. So time becomes a very important thing. If we're using a solvent and that, that those ions are very soluble, then what's going to happen? We run a shorter time because they come off very quickly. For example, if it was really sodium chloride and we're using water and alcohol, it comes off in a one or two minute test. On the other hand, if we have flux residues, which are marginally soluble, we have to run a longer test, a 10 or a 15 minute test to make sure we get all those ions off of the circuit board. So time is important. Solvent matching it to the residue is important because we want to dissolve it. So that's using that data, we want to make sure that we ran the right amount of time with the right solvent. Well, the second thing that you can use the uh, ROSE data is to establish control limits. So that, you know, if your process average is, let's say, one microgram per Per square centimeter and your average variation is you know standard deviation is plus or minus 0.2 that would establish control limits between 0.8 and 0.2 not necessarily at the max but below the max and that's where your normal process operates if it gets outside those control limits that should be a flag to go find out why it's outside those control limits unlike the spike we have to take action immediately we're looking for trends and trying to 
divert those trends from becoming problems. That is how you use your data. And I hope that you've uh, learned about rose testing and that you've learned the history a little bit of rose testing, where it came from and why it's important, how it prevents failures on circuit boards, and how you can use that data to protect your company, its products, and the reputation that your company has. Thank you very much. If you'd like to have more information, feel free to contact us at Austin American Technology, uh, aat-corp.com. Thank you very much for your attention.